You're listening to the Daily Sales Tips Podcast, and I'm your host, Scott Ingram. Today, I'm going to share a really personal story. Those of you who are on the listener list and get my usually weekly emails already saw most of this in this week's email, but I thought I'd go just a little bit deeper here in today's tip. There were a couple of things that triggered a big decision that I made earlier this week. The first was the prep I was doing for the Dale Carnegie webinar on the principles of top 1% level sales success. And as part of that process, I built a word cloud out of all the things, all of the people I've interviewed on the Sales Success Stories podcast told me were the top three contributors to their own success in sales. I also shared that word cloud with the listener list subscribers a couple of weeks ago as well. And one of the biggest words right in the center of that image was the word focus. Then I interviewed Ian Bembenek, who is absolutely crushing it. He's outperforming all of his peers massively and selling more than two times the second best guy on his team. Now, he told me that he's just working two times harder to do that. But what's most interesting is that he's not working two times longer. Instead, he's just maniacally focused on the task at hand over the course of a regular eight-hour day. Now, I don't know that eight hours is regular for most of us, but he literally is working 11 to 7, which is is mind-blowing. Meanwhile, it's Memorial Day weekend, and I'm waking up at 3 a.m. and completely freaking out about how much I have to get done. Most of you know that I have my own sales job and, of course, the associated quota and aspirations that go with that, in addition to hosting two sales podcasts and was working to deliver on two massive projects at the same time. And those are the second volume of the Sales Success Stories book and the Sales Success Summit, both in October. I realized something had to give if I was going to maintain my sanity. Now, a huge shout out to Jeff Bajoric here. He's not only an amazing regular contributor to this show, but he's also an incredible friend and mentor. And he sent me a voice message as I was freaking out, and that helped me really see the best way forward. That's when I decided to pull the plug on the book project, at least for now. We'll probably pick it up again after the summit and aim to publish in Q1 of 2020. But having one less major project and all the cat herding that goes with that to manage felt like the right move. So I let all of my co-authors who were contributing their stories to the book know what was going on. Then I reached out to everyone who had contributed to the crowdfunding campaign to help make that possible what was going on and immediately refunded their money. At some level, this felt like a failure, but not for very long. This community has been super supportive. I got so many great notes and stories about the personal impact they've been experiencing because of this content. There's a lot of value in just telling people what's really going on, even if it feels like you're failing. Now I can breathe a little bit easier and really focus on the Sales Success Summit where I've seen the biggest impacts come from. One of the guys who came to last year's summit, which was in May, so just over a year ago, got a killer new job through connections that he made through that summit and just last week cashed a commission check for just one deal that was worth several hundred thousand dollars. And I know that's not the only big deal that he has in his pipeline. That is the kind of life-changing impact I want to continue to make. And while I love the books and want to keep doing them, the summit is so much more Because you get to spend two days in a really intimate setting with all of these top performers and we'll just have to change the book launch party at Sandra Bullock's old house to an after party. That's easy. So the tip in all this is simply think about what you need to focus on. What's going to have the biggest impact for you and those around you? And what can you cut out and remove to make room for that? And also, Don't be afraid to fail out loud. I'm finding that it helps a lot more than it hurts. Hey, thanks for listening. And if you haven't already joined the listener list yourself, so I can send you a video from the last Sales Success Summit and other behind-the-scenes goodies, 
please click over to dailysales.tips and punch in your email address. Or I think if you're in the U.S., you can still text TOP1 to 444-999. That's T-O-P, the number one, to 444-999 and subscribe that way as well. Thanks again, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. 